Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we all ready to experience the cultural phenomenon that is Black Scott Park? <laughs> Wow, um, this is also our first ever live show. Yeah. It's a different feeling. It really is a different feeling considering we're usually in different rooms across yeah. the city staring at each other on the webcam. Exactly. And now we're staring at you beautiful people. So I think we'll probably just start like right yeah. at the top about the podcast. So I'm Susie. And I'm Shirley. Um, and yeah. we are Black Scott Pod. So, like everybody, we decided on a, a fun little lockdown hobby. So I'll let you start first and just give a wee overview yeah. of like, yeah. I mean, right. I moved to Scotland when I was about seven years old. Um, I'm originally from a small country that's landlocked inside South Africa called Lesotho. I usually tell people it's South Africa because once you have to start explaining the logistics of a country inside of a country, it gets a bit Oh, gets a I'm bit sure sticky. this crowd doesn't understand <laughs> a country within a country. <laughs> no, it gets a bit sticky, but um, yeah, I moved here at the age of seven and like, it was a complete culture shock. It was wild. Like you go from being, you know, everyone that you see has the same face as you, the same presence. And then all of a sudden you're just in an all white school and you're just there chilling and people are asking you if you got here on a banana boat. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I met lovely Susie over here and our friendship has grown and we started up a podcast and that's yeah. pretty much the story of my life. Yeah, um, and just to jump on her, so I also came to Scotland when I was 10. Absolutely massive, huge culture shock and my tiny little mind couldn't comprehend how 24 hours beforehand I was like in a country and there's like loads of black people and then literally overnight get off at Heathrow and it's just a sea of white faces and just for context the most amount of white people that we would see back home would just be like on holiday, like you it would be British on a holiday. That was my like a reference. So <laughs> the second you know we like got off of that plane, we were like, okay, so you're really not in Kansas. Like you're literally <laughs> in a whole different country. You're gonna have to like learn all kinds of different things. And um, so I probably should say that you know even though I use the name Susie, um, I was originally born with Mafanasi, and when I came to Scotland. My mom asked me a question, which was, what do you want to be called? Because nobody can pronounce your name. And this was, you know, registering for a primary school because nobody could sort of say math and ask. And I'm like, just it's not those at time. Hold on, guys. Um, so she literally asked me, she was like, what do you want to be called? And my lovely nine, 10 year old brain was like, well, I really like the Rugrats. So, <laughs> the one character I like, really relate to is, I don't know if you know Susie Carmichael, but I loved her because I loved singing, I loved dancing. I didn't want to be Angelica because a bit too much. But I literally was like, <laughs> yes, I'm going to be Susie. Yeah. And from that day on, I've kind of taken on Susie. And occasionally you can hear me be Mathanasi, but I think you know, it was kind of a nice way of her of bringing me in to choose what I would be called because in a way it was kind of sucks, you know, when people butcher your name quite a lot and not yeah. all of that. But yeah, so that's that that's kind of me and I came to this country and I met Shirley and um, both of our parents were um nurses. Both nurses yeah. and they came over here. Um their friendship actually started before our friendship but it was those two and then we thought to ourselves, well well actually Susie used to babysit me. So for like a long time, she was like, I don't want to be sad. Like, why do I have to go to her house? Yeah, okay. she was like four years younger than me. Why would I want to be sad? Someone four years younger than me. That's <laughs> tough to do. No, but like, um, I got to at the age of 16, randomly. Like, you know, like in African households, right? Like, our families make us do this thing when it's Christmas time. Like, they always buy presents for each other. But instead of them delivering it to themselves, they send you out <laughs> because that, that's why you had a child. Not purely because you wanted to you know, give birth to a lovely human being. No, uh -huh. you just needed someone to do your errands for yep. you, precisely. Um, so I was running my errands for my mom like on Christmas Eve, I think it was, 
and I show up at Susie's house and I'm like, here's the air fryer mum got for your mum. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then Susie's like, wait, how old are you now again? I'm like, 16. She's like, you can chill. Yes. Sit down. Yes. <laughs> How's life? Um, Finally. <laughs> prior to that, like Shirley and I, although we lived in the same um, town, so actually maybe I'll give you some context. So <laughs> Mossobra has got about 30,000 odd people in it and circa 2003 or two, yeah. Shirley's family, my family, and one other family were the extent of black people in, in Mossobra. So I basically knew <laughs> that person. <laughs> no, we all did because like we were because the uh, the other black family that stayed there, that was Auntie too. Mm-hmm. She was yeah. part of the rounds as well. Yeah, for that middle Christmas. But that just goes to show you like how small Mossobra is, and not only that, like the community of us, yeah. the, the whole community of four, like three families. Like, I'm pretty sure they all worked in the same place as well. Yeah, like they, they all, all literally the worked in the same place. It's a, a yeah. super close knit, small community, but you know, 30,000 people and you already know everybody that is like in your community yeah, is a bit yeah. wild. So we always kind of had to figure out and figure out how to grow up because that's the other thing that a lot of people don't think about is when you are, you know, part of a small, super, super small minority. You know what does high school look like and like, what does primary yeah. school look like because i don't know how did you find it? i mean i guess I mean, sort of like school. that's i mean and that's the whole basis of the podcast starting up in the first place it's sort of like a situation where like when you when people talk about like black british culture you see london you see birmingham you see manchester and you see all of these kids that go got to grow up with other kids the same color as them they have like you know proper communities and then like in the meantime we're up here with our communities and bless them obviously like they really we did get the support that we can but the whole concept of like growing up as like a little black girl and there's no role models or like yeah. there's no anyone around you that looks as you or like that understands you and it's just yeah i think the best we got was like um i don't know if you used to watch channel four like is it june sarpong oh, and yeah. she was like on that so that was She's you know somebody t- t- that we looked at there was someone else but i've forgotten but um i don't know yeah, so I mean, for me, when I came here, primary seven was a bit like, well, I was the only sort of black kid in school. So I kind of feel that a lot of questions about um, what it's like growing up back home and a lot of misconceptions um, as well, because a lot of people sort of assume that when you come from a developing world, that you know, you're coming from like absolute poverty and like, you know, it's the, the ops from. <laughs> adverts yeah. and that and like absolutely had you know people um stop and be like oh i've donated to us i'm like <laughs> okay good for Sorry. you um <laughs> but yeah. you know that kind of stuff that kind of vision that because you're the african kid in school that you kind of like have yeah. a lot of pity but it's kind of like well actually mm-hmm. where i've come from is quite rich in yeah and culture a lot and, of things um, you know, we're not all sort of living in the little huts mm-hmm. and stuff and just trying to like educate people like literally yeah. from the get go. Um, but that's not to say, that's not to say that um, in Scotland, we did, I didn't, dis- I discovered something that was like absolutely amazing. I think it was the first week of primary mm-hmm. school. I don't know if I've told you this before. Mm-hmm. So basically, um, it came to lunchtime and the kids were all super excited because they got to go out of the school gates when it was when you were in primary seven to go for lunch so you know everybody's like going oh we're gonna go to the chippy we're all gonna go to the chippy and i'm like what's a chippy <laughs> what, what is it i'm used to you know shima which is like this staple food back home which is like it's very stodgy and it's absolutely not kid friendly like to take into school because you can wash your hands yeah. and do like this that you gotta eat it with your hands that kind of stuff so i was like pretty much i've got i can just go across the road and get some shima but you know at first i was like oh okay what's a chippy yeah and they were like it's fish and chips and i'm like Right. right. Okay. Very good as well. We were landlocked. Like our country's a good yeah. landlocked. They ain't no sea. Yeah. Like, you see a fish like once in a couple months. River. Right. That's Christmas. <laughs> it's a fish. Get a fish for Christmas. Yeah. Now, but do you know the thing is, like, see, kids, kids back in them days were like very inventive. Yeah. Like, I have to give it to them. Like, you can stay mad only for a little bit, but you yeah. actually have to give it to them. Like, that some of the, some of the names. Yeah. Were just. 
You actually do have to give it to them because like I've I've been to myself at that age. Would I have been able to think of something like that? Probably not. So I got braids. Susie got braids initially. Yes. The the, the, the most famous one for every single time we got braids was Medusa. That yes. was great. I was like, how 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 did you manage yeah, to really came out like, Medusa? Wow. No, because your literature skills have to be really fantastic. Yes. Like you have to know Greek mythology first of all. Right. Like, at that the out. age of ten and you're out here doing Greek mythology, like yeah. yeah. That's education. Okay, right. <laughs> you know? That's fine. No, um, but like, I think that's just like some of the beautiful things about like Scotland. Yeah. Like, I think there's nothing more special and wonderful about Scotland than just the way we can turn absolutely anything into an insult. Yeah. Like anything. Well, actually, I was thinking about this the other day, but um, I kind of feel like the way that kids these days talk to each other has like completely changed to the way that we all used to That's sort of right. do it um, back then and you obviously get like well this is why I'm glad in a way that we grew up where when we grew up yes. because I think it would have been a lot more difficult for us with things like you know TikTok, Instagram and Twitter and the sort of the rise of like cyberbullying and stuff because Back in the day when we got the sort of bullying comments, it was stuff that was, you know, saved to your face because there was no other way that you were going to hear it. So people literally people. had to, yeah, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, so people literally had to have whatever it was that they had in their head and like come find you and tell it to your face, basically. And so sort of now you can sort of have it all like a 24 7. Write it on your notes on your so, iPhone and tell yourself this is the insult I'm gonna throw down later. That's right and like basically it's just I feel kind of grateful in a way. I don't really? know. Like, I feel grateful that no, I didn't because, experience Imagine this you had level. time to think of comebacks. That's yeah. the way I think. Like, no, you have to think of comebacks. Really yeah you have to. You can even google the ministry. I think that's yeah. why kids, <laughs> that's yeah. why the bullying is like yeah. yeah. They yeah. google them yeah. and it goes a bit left. Yeah. But no it's it's a uh, it's a mad world out there. It yeah. really, really is. And you even think about it, like when we were growing up. So Susie and I both grew up, and um, obviously back home, she moved when, I'm, when she was ten and I was seven. And one of the things that we often talk about sometimes it's the reality of the dog situation in comparison oh to goodness. back home. Here, you'll be walking down the street, and someone's walking with the biggest dog you've ever seen in your life. Oh, Danny Wally, she's friendly. Is she? Friendly. Is she? Who the same size as me? Talk about friendly. Back home, you see a dog half your size, you're like, you're crossing the roads, you're going over to the next neighborhood because that dog will get there faster than you can. Yeah. I ain't doing that. I ain't being chased by no dog, not in the UK, bro. Yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. Get by a dog. Literally, it's that's probably one of the biggest like culture shocks that I, I kind of got when I got here is like the, the, the dogs. I mean, they're like, so, you know what, it's taken 20 years, but yes, they're super <laughs> cute, like absolutely adorable, little cute little things. But the thing is, back home, like you say, yeah. dogs are not kept for no. like being pets like yeah. they're kept to guard so when it came here and you know you go over to your friend's house for the first time Ooh, and they didn't what? tell you that there's a dog um basically you've got no <laughs> other yeah you just there's have no to like, run. And, like nobody seems to understand like when that sheer panic is actually erupting like from deep down inside you like you are you are so scared <laughs> oh no it's fine it's fine you just go sit in all the room. You, you just lick your hand. No, um, no, no, no. He wants, he wants no. a taste. He wants to eat me. I'm pretty <laughs> sure everyone in this room probably has a dog chase story. Am I right? Has or a dog am chase I? Story. We all have like some. You don't have a dog, you chase, don't story. Have a dog chase story. You, you do. Yes, yes, yes. That is a beautiful life I'll give you. I'm just going to use you as an example, but like, yes, absolutely. See, everybody does have a dog chase story, so we're absolutely justified in our response There's to dogs. Some scary, scary, scary times. Like, it was just, it's just something that you'll never get used to. And I'm looking back what now at it. What took you ages to get used to? Almost everything. I would say the accent. Which is quite funny now that you say the accent. Because when you now. speak, people are like, oh my God, you're Scottish. I'm like, can you tell? And then when you're in Scotland, people are like, where are you from? You've got like a really interesting accent. Scotland, <laughs> pretty much. But I think at the accent, definitely. My favorite thing to say was Rind the Rindaboo. What? Rind the Rindaboo. What? I loved it. I loved it. Like for a good two years, every time I went home, I was like, Rind the Rindaboo. Uh -huh. <laughs> people are like, what does that mean? I'm like, it's Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, around the roundabout. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I think, yeah. 
Did you not have any issues with it? With the language barrier, no. I just thought everybody talked too fast. Yeah. And then now I talk too fast for people, so that's just as well, and that's just fine. Goes full circle, isn't it? Yeah, it really does. Like, absolutely. But actually, um, so something momentous happened um, <laughs> this week for myself. I have to steal the spotlight. No, you have but, to do it. Have but, to do and it. I'm so excited about this. But um, after about 20 odd years, um, I finally got my British citizenship and I got it all through and I am so excited. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yay! <laughs> yeah, and it's such a long process. And after going through last like 14 months of waiting for things to, you know, come through, um, you know, going through your know, rigorous immigration interviews and all of that and just kind of feeling like oh my god that like this is the most draining process i can totally see why people you know we just be like i'd rather do anything it's else than fill out an immigration yeah. form but anyways yes so i finally i went and i got my citizenship had the ceremony got handed this wonderful envelope <laughs> and i was like i'm gonna wait until I, i'm gonna go home and i'm gonna savor this i'm not gonna open this right now in the car i'm gonna you know open it when i get home and I get home and I open it and it's freaking Pretty Patel's face. Like literally <laughs> the first page is Pretty Patel. Like I literally oh, felt to the UK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how am I supposed to feel right now? <laughs> um, wonderful. And also, wonderful. did we need the photo before the welcome text? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she had that smirk. I can definitely verify she had the smirk on. Um, but yeah, so I am officially a British citizen, which is great and it's wonderful and hopefully makes things a lot easier um, in life because traveling with sometimes with um, an African passport is one of the oh, most it's a stressful. Do you, do you know how much they respect you when you're carrying a red passport in airports? Like they blue. may as well, they... Blue. Oh, is it blue now? <laughs> You don't need to do this. <laughs> I remember, like, cause pretty much ever since I moved here, I've been like traveling with my mom and dad, like, through that way. So they'll always do it. I never really sussed it, I never clocked it. Up until like a couple years ago, when I decided to travel on my South African passport because I'd lost my passport, pretty much. Um, so I, I guess I didn't really realize like how respected you were. Like once you get into that specific like UK so pass crazy, though, EU passports people. lane and other passports lane. Like this lady basically pushed me. She was like, you need to move. I was like, oh, yo, I'm moving, ma'am. Like, it's okay. And like next minute, you know, it's like, you're not moving quick enough. Dude, like we literally just got off a flight. Like everybody yeah. here is moving at the same pace and these people in front of us. Like, it, is it that deep? Yeah. I ain't never seen that behavior on the other side of the line before. Oh, well, man. we're all gonna find out now in this brand new world. Um, With our that blue passports. Blue. Into it. Yeah, absolutely. Is it like a navy or like a... A what? Like the blue, is it like a navy or like sky blue? Or? Girl, I, I literally had to send off for everything, so I'm, I'm gonna find out in 10 weeks. So that's... <laughs> nice. I'm nice. so excited for that. Nice. But yeah, how did you find um, sort of, well, the thing about Shirley is that she's always been like really outgoing, like more outgoing um, than me. So for the longest time ever, you were my reference point for like all things like black and that yeah. stuff that's going on in Edinburgh. Because um, I don't know if you've all been walking around this festival, but I'm pretty sure I feel really confident in so I was saying. I don't think you've seen many black people. I've seen two lovely ladies. Yeah. Oh, three lovely ladies. You're a third lovely lady. Hey. Lovely lady <laughs> like, honestly, I, I, I think that's the the pole. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, um, the whole, the yeah. whole thing is, uh. Yeah, because you were my reference point yeah. for a lot of it because I, I found it obviously quite difficult to sort of make friends yeah. out there because. Musselburgh can be like, well, small towns, you know cold. how small towns are you're when cold. you're in your own community and that community is so difficult yeah. to like come out of it. Yeah. But how did you find it? Because you were kind of almost always quite well connected. Yeah. That. So how well, the you? thing is, is that like, that was actually all through my mom and through like youth groups. I have to actually physically go to like a youth group that supported um, black and ethnic minority um, ladies across 
um, Edinburgh and Glasgow, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. But at the time when I went, it was just um, Edinburgh. So it was generally just like a meet up every two Tuesdays, and yeah. you, you you meet all of these people, and you're like, damn, like okay, so there actually is more than one black family in this entire city. Yeah. We can work with that. And I think after that, dare I say, this is so this is so bad. Like, yeah, guys, we're friends. No, I made black friends by going clubbing. Oh, and I, I did that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I did that. Okay, so yes. once I realized that there's like, there is a whole other side of clubbing. Because when, when I started clubbing, I was going to places like Cav. I don't know if any of you guys know what Cav is like. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot. Like, it's really, really a lot. There's like different types of room. There was an R&B room that I went to for the longest time. Yeah. But it had carpet on it. So you're in a nightclub and there's carpet uh. on the floor. So it was a lot. But once I kind of realized that like, you know, there's like a whole black scene and stuff, that yeah. really opened so many doors yeah. to absolutely everything. Yeah. And I think that's when you and I then eventually start clubbing yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, I think so, too. because it's I think also. my main spot up to that point was basically the hive. Um, <laughs> yeah, one pound shots. Five. One pound no. shots, sticky walls and floors. Yes. <laughs> so good. You go out with twenty pounds, come back with fifteen. Still somehow drunk. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I remember so actually. Huh? Like you actually used to be able to go out with a tenner in your account and you're yeah. fine. Now like, you can't even get the bus ticket for like. What? Oh my god! You'll be an entry with that tenner and you're gonna be there fumbling your fingers like, yeah. <laughs> what we do now? It's not looking good. It is not looking good. Yeah, but so yeah. I think like round right about that clubbing time is probably when I started like getting a bit more like um, friendships with like yeah. people from different communities. And it just kind of shows like sometimes you have to come out of your you shell, know, yeah. comfort zone. <laughs> I'm definitely out of my shell to like yeah. meet different people for sure, yeah. yeah I feel that. But um, something that I always sort of keep coming back to, um, that I always kind of feel like I have to share, is how when we were in high school, um, I'm scared I don't, about I don't really know how to, to I don't really know how to make this confession because what I think it would be very very like Which one? visible. But Which one? if you remember Dream Mat Moose, I'm sure <laughs> a couple Sorry. of us went through the Dream Mat Moose phase. Well. Oh, Thanks my foundation to... <laughs> lips, foundation lips, foundation lips. Not just that, it was the fact that Dream, Matt, Moose, Maybelline, L'Oreal, wherever, that they had one shade for all black women and they Beautiful used time. Beyonce as the shade. Beautiful pen. So literally, me That's and Shirley time. with our one pot. And Dream, Matt, Moose was actually the breakthrough because if you remember the darkest yes. color that they used to have in Superdrug, was sand. Oh yeah. Sand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's like with like the deepest ash that you can get from sand as well. It was <laughs> it was really an experience. So when Dream Mat Moose came out in that one color, mm -hmm. like I mean, we were said, falling all over what? ourselves. Like don't get it wrong, we were falling over ourselves. <laughs> Because finally, yes. <laughs> see y'all with your foundation lips. You see me. I'm gonna have foundation lips too. Yeah, exactly. I'm come and do it as well. I'm gonna get on board this fashion trend that I can participate in. But yeah, literally the fact that you and I shared a singular a shade of foundation yeah. between mm -hmm. us is like mm -hmm. ridiculous, and it's so crazy now to think about how we do made. You know what I mean? How I we know. used to do our makeup. Oh my God. I, I always think about this and sometimes when I tell people, people are like, you did not do that. No, yeah. I did that. I did that. <laughs> so that sand foundation I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. I bought that and I used it because I was like, there's no way you're going to break me. No, <laughs> no you're not going to do it. I will put makeup on my face and I will look nice. So I used to cake that like literally Ooh. all over my face. Ooh. Out here looking like Casper doesn't want to look like Casper. It was not looking good. It was looking like reverse. But then I take like bronzer. <laughs> this bronzer as well is like tailored to white people, not black people either. I was like, yeah, that's you what still, I mean. you, you still use that bronzer. Don't lie. Do still use Don't that? lie. It's a good bronzer. It's a good yeah. bronzer. It smells like chocolate too. It's a good bronzer. I can't believe it. But you know what? You actually <laughs> reminded me some of the most mental, um, mental, mental names of the foundation. I mean, we've gotten a lot better now. But um, so my shade, oh, yeah. once inclusivity had started, um, the deepest shade, me apparently, um, was called mud. <laughs> I remember that. 
It was called I Mutt. I that. Yes, lovely. And, and then everybody so got caramel and porcelain. <laughs> mud. <laughs> How am I supposed to feel? <laughs> mud. Mud. No, I do feel that. No, they let us down. They actually, the makeup industry let us down. So, cause you we now have espresso. Yeah, yeah it's called oh, espresso. espresso. Yeah. Espresso now. No, yeah. you got different. You got different shades of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Americano. <laughs> You've just got plain coffee. Got different shades. Got milky coffee. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Like they're really not just out there just. To take a I'm piss just off. glad that they're take not saying we're like mud and dirt and whatever. I'm glad that we've moved that dial along. Yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. And like people are making makeup for people that need makeup, which yes. is all of us. Yes. Um, no, but like those struggles there were actually deep. Those struggles were like so deep. <laughs> um, on, on very, very similar to the makeup situation was the whole hair situation. Uh, yeah. Um, like I know I mentioned earlier that people used to say like, oh, see, like hand nicknames and stuff. But see the actual journey of hair not being yeah. somewhere where there's a lot of people that do your hair. Yeah, so there was literally one hairdresser that we had um, and she's still around and she is an OG and we love her so much. Um, Yeah, and she has a shop in Great Junction Street, it's called Culture Lounge. But this woman basically serviced the whole black community in Edinburgh for hair because it is so difficult. Well, at the time it was difficult to get braid packs. Um, and now like wigs and all that kind of stuff, you know, you really had to go order it online um, or trek to Glasgow or trek to like yeah. London or just somewhere Something. with like bigger population of black people. But um, Colleen was like absolutely Hello. amazing and she like helped so many of us um, to do our hair. No, she really, really did. But you know what the problem is? See, in the meantime of you getting your hair, see, 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 see the wee breaks, you've got your protective hairstyle time and then you've got your breaks when you're just leaving your hair naturally out. Now I wanted to go a step far, like, I wanted to go a step further. I was like, you know what, yeah. bring them straighteners around. Oh. So as you can imagine, every single morning before school, the smell of like charred oil in the air. <laughs> Shirley's got a fringe that goes that way, but like, the <laughs> like hair the texture doesn't really, really, like, way. honestly, this fringe was sitting like this. <laughs> it was like a cap. And I thought I was doing the most. I thought, I like, I don't I was like, yeah, you did it. I used to spike up my hair at the ends as well, put a wee bandana on. And I really used to think, I'm doing this. Now you look back at the pictures, you're like, yeah. Why did nobody stop me? I had no real friends. Yeah, they, <laughs> they just let you go out. That's actually got me thinking. I need to jump on Facebook and list guys. What were you thinking of letting <laughs> me leave the house like that? Like, what were you doing? Why are you? Why Was are we that not part fringes? of your emo phase, Let's though? Go. We went through emo <laughs> stages. Yeah. We went through emo Which stages. Which is really yeah. difficult as and well, as we actually. See, you know, that's like emo of color. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you didn't have the tutu. I did have the tutu and the leg warmers the gloves. and the. Do you remember the hoodies with the stars? Please no. Yeah, <laughs> and like the combats. The, the spiky studded belt. Yeah. Like that. And like those, like the thing of warmer gloves. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was. But completely ruined by the fact that he couldn't slick your hair. Like you couldn't do that's the what swoop. I mean. Like I wanted to do the. You know the flick, but you're... like my hair's too <laughs> static, so every time I flick, just the fringe would just stand. Like, <laughs> hi, it was a lot. It was really, really a lot. But like, Loki, those were some great times. Yeah, like, it, was, those were great it was. It was. It was. I literally ventured into like the, the you know the eyeliner, the you just dramatic before Julia you Fox. cut your dramatic. hair. Your mother let you cut your hair. Well, not just that. <laughs> not not like. just that. In, col- in college, for some reason, I was like, right, yeah. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that my hair can just sort of spike up and stand up by itself without having to put any gel or like whatever it is. You didn't. I shaved one side of my hair off. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, and then I saw how horrific it looked. After the first day of college, I literally turned up and everyone was like, <laughs> literally was like oh i should i know i should just shave the other side off so i went and i shaved the other side off and i came back and still the same the same list i just said oh, no but you want that more of a chest <laughs> now nah, you want to have a chest but that's the thing though because if i had to kind of have like somebody to just be like this take is a second is. take a second before you shave your hair off to think just it. think about it mm. just you're going to shave your hair off 
Um, so yeah, I wish somebody had stopped me because no, I actually envied you though. I generally, I legitimately envied the fact that you were able to just do, like, do you know what? Like, allow it because, like, your hair is just such a big part of yourself. Like, yeah. I don't know, like. Up until I got to this age to be confident enough to be like, you know what, let me just take it off because I'm too stressed. For me, my hair was so everything. So good with a bald head, you know? huh? Yeah. But it's the big forehead that's the issue. But like, you know, we leave that. We talk about it another day. So having Africans, that's the blood I was given in it. But um, no, like, it was just such a big part of my identity. And I was like, not nah, like, uh, why on earth would you shave your hair off by choice? Like, it takes us years to even get to shoulder length, sis, by mm-hmm. choice. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, yes. Look at this rock star. Yes. You're doing it, doing the most is. No, but I will give it to you because I could never, I could have never ever did that. No. I'd look at me now. I'll never do it again though. Liar. No, I never But like, did it's it. so nice. It's such a refreshing feeling. Yes. Do you know when you don't have to wake up and like corn grow your hair or put a wig on? <laughs> or like when you don't have braids, you can just chill. So I That's actually crazy. have got a thing. Okay, right. <laughs> so just while we are all here and we are all gathered, um, I think this is now a time to do a very, very important sort of PSA. Um, if you're speaking to a black woman and you think, you think it may be a wig, or you're not sure, but you want to clarify, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Where'd you get that from, sis? Yeah, just, let's just avoid that. Yeah. Because I know you're looking at my hairline. <laughs> just so we know. We know that you were looking in that specific spot. Uh, no, <laughs> do you know what I hate? I, I, I hate this, and I don't know if you've ever gotten this, yeah? But like my my edges are evidently not blended. Like you can literally see Girl, the front is just afro. Giving you all this for free. I am. <laughs> you can see the front is afro and the rest is wig. And someone comes up. Is that your real hair? Yeah, it is. The two different textures and colors. Yeah. all of it. I call it a superpower. All actually. together. Yeah, it's it's basic. It's mixed hair. No, it's get definitely it. a superpower because I used to get such a power trip back yeah. in school when I would like. Go away, it's Friday, whatever. You saw me with short hair on Friday. Monday, I've got the long hair. And everyone was like, oh my God, how, like, is that your new hair? Did it, did it, oh my gosh, that's so good. And I was literally like, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah it's my hair. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to fall off in public. Huh? You're going to fall off in public. Mm, almost. 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 So no definite. No. Nah, guys, I've <laughs> fallen off in public a couple of times. Yeah. Like, I funny. would say with pride and chest because those were very, very hard days. This happened in a nightclub. Yeah, in a nightclub. Bang on the dance floor, like right in the middle. I bumped into like an old high school friend. And at this time, like there was no such thing as like gluing and securing and like all of that mishmash mosh. Um, you just stick the wig on on top of your head and you call it a day and you leave the house. Mm-hmm. So I bump into a friend and he hugs me. So obviously his hug must have like latched onto the back of my wig. We're in the middle of this beautiful embrace, it's a moment. <laughs> All of a sudden, like, I just feel naked. Like, there's a breeze somewhere where there's not meant to be a breeze. I'm like, my wig's on the floor. <laughs> the whole damn thing's on the floor. Like, literally looking like a dead rat on the floor. It's just there. I ain't never picked up work so fast and ran to the bathroom. I had to sit down and basically give myself a pep talk and be like, dude, like, you can either leave now call it a day you know you've been defeated <laughs> or you can go out there and down five tequila shots and call it like <laughs> like it's literally two o'clock there's a whole hour to do this i chose option two because why not and this why is the time that? when club photographers are rampant oh it's a thing <laughs> I, there's somewhere out there there is a photograph of my wig on the floor and then whoever has it, it like if you could come forward and just <laughs> give it to me because it's a beautiful memory no but i will say that my friends actually had my back that day because the way they all scattered to put that wig back onto my head five girls one wig one head it was beautiful it was a beautiful it's unity that's what it was. It was unity. Yeah, you know. That's, just came that's what they mean by black power. Not traveling pants. That's, I mean, they did traveling put it on backwards. <laughs> but, you know, we done something about that situation. <laughs> yeah. Now we've 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 advanced in the yeah. world of hair. We really have. Yeah. We have made. That's it why you, you absolutely should not leaves. mention it. Thank you. <laughs> that is a PSA for Don't. today. Miles and Lee. I think um, that probably is also us. Ends on a weird note, that's fine. That's our <laughs> podcast, basically. Um, love to leave you all with some wonderful 
tidbits and things to take away yeah. <laughs> for the weekend. You know? Um, I guess if you take anything away from our podcast today is hopefully, you know, just um, to so listen to more different types of voices, people you normally wouldn't, you know, if you want to, if you're wondering about someone's experience, you know, podcasts are fantastic because people are happy to talk and talk for days. So, you know, yeah, absolutely. How about we listen to our podcast, um, which you can find it pretty much anywhere. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Picture this. You're fully immersed in your podcast because in the back of your mind, you're not trying to recall when that deadline was supposed to be or stressing to keep everyone updated on next steps. Meet Monday.com, a work management platform that makes having peace of mind easy. With Monday.com, all your work lives in one centralized place. You can automate updates to keep team members up to speed and ensure nothing falls to the cracks, even while you're enjoying your favorite podcast. To start your 14-day free trial, go to monday.com.